Good morning, everyone. And um, today we are going to look at um, our discussion session two. In the first discussion, um, we were given the direct utility function, and we were able to derive um, our machine demand function from it. Now, what we are going to do today is to also derive our indirect utility function. And um, so you may recall from the first discussion that um, we were given an, a utility function, which was specified as utility of x1, x2, x1, x2 is equals to um, x1 pi plus x2 pi or in bracket 1 over 5, right? So this is a utility function that was given to us. And when we saw for the, our machine demand functions, we had x1, which was a function of p and then y. I'm quoting this from the previous session. We had x1 was a function of p and y to be what um, p1, 1 over p minus 1 multiplied by y all over p1, um, p5 minus 1 plus p2, phi over phi minus 1. So this was what we got for x1, and we had x2, which was also a function of p and y, to be um, p2, 1 over 1 over phi minus 1, multiplied by y, all over p1, phi over phi minus 1, plus p2, bracket phi over phi minus one. So these were um, our machine demand function for S1 and X2. And the indirect utility function is always represented with a function of four V, P and Y, right? Which we say is also the same as utility of X, the optimal X, which is the function of P and Y, right? So this expression, um, what we are saying is that um, when you have to direct utility function and you substitute the x1 x2 in our direct utility function with that of the machine demand function then what you get becomes your what indirect utility function is okay so and that indirect utility function is a function of what prices and income so we're just going to replace our utility function with the optimal x1 and x2 to, in order to get our indirect utility function Okay, so um, now, so what we are going to do in this case is just to replace our opt uh, machine demand function for x1 and x2 into our indirect utility function, and that is going to give us our indirect utility function. So let's try and simplify um, the optimal x1 and x2 that we got. We had x1, which is a function of py, to be equals to p1, 1 over pi minus one multiplied by y all over p1, um, p1 phi over phi minus one plus p2 into bracket phi over phi minus one, right? So, um, and then we have, we had x2 to be equals to p2 one over phi, which in this case represent elasticity multiplied by y all over p1 phi into bracket phi minus one plus um, p2 phi over phi minus one all right so simplify this so let's say we are going to use this to represent um, r is okay then i can also say okay let me subtract you see we are using this to represent this so if you subtract, if you subtract um, one from the side of the equation, I'm going to have phi over phi minus one equals to r minus one, right? So when, when I, sim I simplify this expression, I'm going to have um, I'm going to have one over phi. Okay, so I think you cannot see from this part. So when I simplify this expression on the left hand side here. On the left hand side here, um, I'm going to have 
this line this one here. So I'm going to I'm going to have it as one over p minus one is equals to r minus one. One over p r minus one, which in terms um, p one r minus one y or over p two r plus sorry p one r plus t two r and x two is also the same as so p two r minus one or over p one r plus p two simplify um the machine demand function for x1 and x2 so then let's go and replace this in our equation our um, utility function which we we said x1 was equal to utility was what utility of x1 x2 is equals to um x1 phi plus x2 phi 1 over phi right so when we replace this into this um, we are going to have it as P one R minus one Y multiplied by phi for the phi here plus um all over P one R plus P two R multiplied by phi here all over plus we have X two for this P two r minus one multiplied by y or phi plus p1 r plus p2 r also multiplied by phi or over one plus phi is okay yes yeah, so we can just take the common factor term out the common term is sort the y y so if i take the common term out i'm going to have y um exponent p and there's already another exponent here that is the one um, after the brackets so multiply by one over phi into brackets yeah into brackets um so once i take that one i'm going to have p1 so look at something um this expression here i'm going to focus on the expression here oh sorry sorry um sorry it's supposed to be i'm sorry um r minus one great phi great so i'm just going to focus on the expression here the exponent of p r y is okay so that becomes um p r minus one all over p one r plus p two r plus um p two this is p one p2 r minus one um so this is exponent phi r minus one exponent phi um all over p1 r plus p2 r plus p2 r over one over phi great so Great. So let's look at the exponent of p1. Um, we had this. We had this as what um, r1 minus one multiplied by p. Right. I'm just looking at the exponents of p1 and p2. Right. So let's try and uh, simplify this because this one is an index. Right. It's going to be multiplied. If you recall, we said um, if you recall from the, the previous thing that we did, we said um, r minus one. Right. We wrote p over p minus one minus one right was equals to um r minus one is okay great now because this one here is an index it is uh, to an exponent once uh, the index when you are there multiplying what you add right so this expression here which is being multiplied by p right is the same as just adding what plus one is okay it's just like um it now becomes plus one. Is okay, plus one, plus one. Then we have it as um, phi over phi minus one equals to 
R is okay. So that means this expression here is the same as phi over um, phi minus one is equals to R. Is okay. Then in that case, then I can see um, the equation that we are solving. Phi y is now equals to um, y into bracket P one R plus P two R all over um, P one R plus P two R all over um, phi multiply by one over P is okay. So that is what we are going to have now. So we can as well simplify this and also uh, have it as V of P Y is equals to um, Y into bracket P one R plus P two R into bracket um, one minus phi multiplied by the one over phi that we have at the end. So uh, it's just normal um, indices because the bases are the same, or is it? Um, because the bases of this one and this one are the same, I just brought this one is the same as what um, exponent one. So because they are dividing and they have the same base, you can just bring this one up and it becomes minus, you subtract it from here, it's okay. Then you subtract it from here, you bring it, it comes one minus three. So that is exactly what I did. Um, what I did in getting this. So this is one P. So that's what I did, <coughs> sorry, in getting this, great. Now we have gotten the answer, this one to be like this. So I can say V over P Y is now equals to what um, Y into bracket P one R plus P two, R or into bracket um one over phi minus phi, right? It's okay. So we're just trying to write everything in terms of what R because we have used R to represent it here. But when you check from the beginning, we said what we, we if you recall, we said um phi over phi minus one is equals to what R. Okay, that is what we said, right? But look at the expression that we have here. It's like the inverse of this one, right? This expression that we have here, it's like the inverse of this one, right? So I can see then um, this one becomes phi minus one over phi is equals to one over r. This is mathematics. It's okay. Now look at um, this again. When you check what we said, we said um, p over p minus one, right? But when you look at what we have here, we have this as well. What we have here is what one minus three over p. So I can as well write this as well, look at something. Um, I can also say that this implies that um, minus one minus P over P, right? Is equals to minus one, sorry, um, sorry, we have it as, sorry, we are going to have it as minus, um, minus um, P, minus one is okay is equals to minus one over r is okay then this expression becomes or the same as what one minus p so this expression here is the same as what one minus p over p one minus this expression here sorry um is the same as let me go here the same as one minus p all over p, which is equals to what um, one over r. Let me check again. Which is equals to yeah um, one over minus one over and, uh, this yeah, exactly great. So that means the expression there. Now we can write v over p y as um, y into bracket p1 r plus p2 r then negative one over r is okay so this is what we call the indirect utility function and we just replaced our x1 and x2 into our direct utility function 
And after doing a little simplification, we are getting this expression as well, um, the direct, the indirect utility function. Now in, in my next um, discussion, I'm going to look at some properties of the indirect utility function and we're going to use normal um, differentiation to prove those things. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to my videos.